What's up, YF Sports, man? It's Lamont. We back. Back with another podcast episode, man. Today we got a well, kind of a special episode for you guys, man. We're going to be touching on some WNBA today, some WNBA news and notes. Um, and just kind of wanted to touch on this from, you know, as we always do from a more unique perspective on, on a topic that we've covered in the past. But before we get started today, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to the video. If you haven't done so already, we're grinding to 20K. Uh, we're looking forward to that, you know, to having that 20K live stream. So as we approach 20K, we're just going to go live. And we're just going to rock out live until we hit that threshold. So that's just one of the first milestones here at FYF Sports. Uh, but today we're going to be touching on a topic involving uh, the WNBA and the Atlanta Dream. One of the owners of the Atlanta Dream, Kelly Loeffler. Um, now, the reason why we're talking about her is that, you know, a few months ago, as the WNBA was entering the bubble and they were just kind of hashing out the details uh, for how the WNBA was going to address and, 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 and kind of support um, some of the social issues uh, that we were dealing with at that time. Um, Kelly Loeffler was one of the, uh, you know, the loudest voices that kind of stood up and said, you know what, we shouldn't have Black Lives Matter on these jerseys. Uh, instead, it should be the U.S. flag. And, and she said a number of things um, that the players uh, definitely did not take a liking to. They felt that she did not support them, that she did not understand the social climate, nor did she have a full understanding uh, of some of the issues, social issues that needed to be addressed. You know, regardless of what part political party you're affiliated with, regardless of what party line you're on, the social issues that we were seeing that we're still seeing now, but especially so after we watched the uh, the murder uh, of George Floyd, um, those things needed to be addressed and spoken upon by everybody, whether you're Democrat, Republican, conservative or liberal. This is something that just needed to be addressed because that's absolutely one thing that cannot happen and should not be accepted by anybody. But um when Kelly Loeffler, when, when she came out with her statements, highly critical of the WNBA's Black Lives Matter initiative, um, as far as putting Black Lives Matter on the jerseys, um, I actually, at that particular time, in a sense, agree with her. I, I, in a sense, agree with her because I didn't feel that putting slogans on the jerseys or on the, on the court itself would do anything to affect change. I think organizations as big as the WNBA and the NBA, they have the power and the financial resources to do much more impactful things. That's what that's what I feel. I still feel that way. I still because as you can see, now that the now the teams have left the bubble, the slogans have went away as well. And we are left with nothing tangible or impactful that can be used as a viable resource to continue to improve upon these social issues or to train and teach just so we can have a better America. So that's why I was, uh, you know, that's why I was against it. Now, she also spoke out against it, maybe in a more negative connotation. Um, but the players definitely, the players definitely revolted against her. And when she came out and, and went against the WNBA as players, um, the players voiced their concerns. There were a lot of WNBA players that stepped out and said, you know what? Um, she needs to be removed from the WNBA. With her being a part owner, she does not need to be affiliated with us. Um, and it even went as far as it even went as far as the WNBA releasing a statement on her. I'm going to show you guys that statement that the WNBA released. We're going to go ahead and put that up right here about this particular situation. All right, so the WNBA have released a statement on July 7th, uh, and it basically said that uh, the WNBA is based on principle, the principle of equal and fair treatment of all people, and we, along with the teams and players, will continue to use our platforms to vigorously advocate for social justice. So the WNBA and players were on the same accord right there, but they further went on to state that Senator Kelly Loeffler has not served as a governor of the Atlanta Dream since October 2019 and is no longer involved in the day to day businesses with the team. So essentially, the NBA separated themselves from the WNBA, separated themselves from Kelly Loeffler 
after she came out aggressively going against Black Lives Matter and kind of opposing what the players were advocating for. All right. And one of the reasons why I feel like the players kind of revolted against her is because she made these blanket statements with no real substance or meaning behind them. She didn't she didn't she didn't back them up by saying, you know what, instead of uh, 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 of using Black Lives Matter, this is what we can do to affect real change on these social issues. She just said we can replace Black Lives Matter with a U.S. flag, which that in and of itself is also a violation of the U.S. flag code. You cannot manipulate the U.S. flag and use it as decals or logos on jerseys or anything like that. So for her to be a U.S. senator and also not know that as well, which is even more striking. So uh, I really wanted to touch on this from a more unique perspective because we here at FYF Sports, um, we were wrong about Kelly Loeffler for something completely different. And the reason why we are now really calling her out um, is because after some of her most more recent actions, I think she's exposed herself as just someone who vies for votes. She's just playing a political game. She just she's exposed herself as someone who just says things to galvanize people to get their vote. And once she gets their vote, she's done with you. And she kind of exposed herself on that. You know what we do here at FYF Sports for research purposes only. And when we did the research, when we found out about what she was doing, we definitely had to come to you guys with the news to expose it. So what I'm going to do is uh, first, I'm going to play a clip and we're going to play a series of clips. So in case you haven't been following this story, I want you to be fully versed on what's going on. I'm going to play a clip first on what happened with Kelly Loeffler in the WNBA. And then we're going to get on. Um, we're going to move on on to why her feelings about the WNBA and the Black Lives Matter initiative, why I feel that they were not backed by any moral, any ethics or substance. But let's go ahead and get to that clip. Um, about the WNBA and Kelly Loeffler. WNBA News, Atlanta Dream co-owner Kelly Loeffler is not in favor of the WNBA social justice plans. And Loeffler has sent a letter to Commissioner Kathy Engelbert objecting to the league's initiatives to honor the Black Lives Matter movement when the season begins in Florida. Now, Loeffler is a Republican U.S. Senator who was appointed and she is running to keep her seat this November. She asked the commissioner to scrap plans for players to wear warm-up jerseys reading Black Lives Matter and say her name. And she instead said they should put an American flag on all uniforms and apparel. Here's LaChina Robinson, who works as an analyst for the Atlanta Dream. Talking to several players and looking at their social media platforms, there's a very common theme, and it's by Kelly. They want her gone from the WNBA altogether. Uh, Natasha Cloud and Sydney Colson, Brianna Stewart, Sue Bird, the Players Association, all making very strong statement that they don't feel like the WNBA is a place for Kelly Leffler based on some of her beliefs around Black Lives Matter. And it's not enough for them that she has stepped back from day-to-day -day operations, but basically that um, her beliefs contradict everything that WNBA stands for, especially around issues of social injustice, and that they want her gone from the Atlanta franchise as a co-owner. And for more now, we welcome in Holly Rowe. And Holly, the WNBA had offered their statement in response to this, saying that Senator Leffler was not part of the day-to-day -day operations of the team. But as you've just heard, the players want to cut ties. Uh, this is somewhat evocative, really, of Donald Sterling and the situation was he was kicked out as the owner of the Clippers. Um, so it has happened. There is precedent. All right, so there we have it right there. That clip just kind of breaks down um the wnba stance initially against kelly lawfully for her comments uh against the black lives matter initiative now again the reason why the wnba swift action came down the way it did is because they potentially knew what we ultimately found out about kelly lawfully um Again, initially, I was basically against what the WNBA did because I felt that everyone was entitled to opinion. I understand that even some blacks don't initially agree with Black Lives Matter, the organization and what it stands for. But at that particular time, with the social injustices, with the social climate, Black Lives Matter meant something bigger and more than just 
that particular organization. So I also at that time understood that whenever people said Black Lives Matter, it did not always directly tie to that organization or that particular movement. When you go to the website and you see some of the things that that original Black Lives Matter organization stands for. At this particular time, it was about the slogan. It was about the meaning behind that slogan. And it was about the things that were actually going on in the community. Um, and no one was doing nothing, anything about it. And it started with the killing of George Floyd. So that from that aspect, I understood where the narrative was coming from with the WNBA and what they were trying to push for. And again, it wasn't to act. I don't think it was actually to support Black Lives Matter, the organization. I think it was more so to create awareness for the social climate at hand. And 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 once everybody is aware, then you can start to affect change, right? Because you have to be aware before you can make change. So again, with with this senator right here, and obviously we know she's in a uh, you know a Senate race. She you know at that particular time uh, she she was going up against Raphael Warnock. She's comp she as she was competing for the Senate seat uh, against Raphael Warnock, but which she's ultimately lost. Um, but I saw a series of things that just you know over the last week just just let me know that I don't think her stance on. Black Lives Matter was 100% genuine. And I'm going to break down why I don't feel it was genuine and why I feel I owe the WNBA and those players an apology for being critical of them forcing her out. Um, because now she's shown her true colors. She's shown her true colors. And the way she exposed herself was in dealing with President Donald Trump. Um, as we all know, President Donald Trump has recently lost an election to Joe Biden. Um, and he's came out and he's openly said that he feels that votes were not counted. He feels that votes were destroyed. He feels that this election was stolen from him. And I know you guys have all heard the slogan, stop the steal. Um, I mean, they, they've, they've made this a slogan out there and it's all been started by president Donald Trump. And he's also had a few politicians side with him in his efforts to either throw out some of these votes that got Joe Biden elected uh, or, you know, object to the, uh, to the electoral college vote right. in, in, in wanting to play party lines um, in wanting to galvanize her voting base. And, and, and hopefully I think she thought that this would ultimately help her win her Senate seat back in Georgia. Uh, what she recently decided to do was she recently decided to come out and vocalize her support for President Donald Trump um, and his objection to the electoral college vote. And she said that when it came time for her to make her vote, that she would object to the electoral college vote. All right. On January 6th. All right. So I'm going to play this first video right here to show you. Um, where where she went left with me um and and why the WNBA was right and those players were right to boot her from that organization and remove her from any dealings or any operations with the Atlanta Dream or the WNBA whatsoever all right but look well let's go to this video right here what we're doing is I, I want to show you guys her clear and concise stance standing with Donald Trump to object to the electoral college vote all right and I want you to watch how she's galvanizing her fan base for the votes. All right, I want you to watch and see this. We're gonna go ahead and get to that video right here. Hello, Georgia! Woo! Thank you, Georgia! I have an announcement, Georgia. On January 6th, I will object to the Electoral College vote. That's right. That's right. Thank you. We're going to get this done. All right, Georgia, but I have a very important question for you. Are you ready to show America that Georgia is a red state? That's right. That's right. Look, this president fought for us. We're fighting for him. He put America first. He put the American worker first. Thank you, Mr. President. 
He stood with our men and women of law enforcement. He restored our military. My opponent, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, he attacked, yeah, he attacked our police, our military. He spoke out against Israel, evangelicals, small businesses. Georgia, we have to hold the line. You have to get out and vote tomorrow. Georgia, we are the firewall to socialism. We have to get it done. I love you guys. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Georgia. All right, so as you guys can see right there, Kelly Leffler uh, vocalizing her support for President Donald Trump and uh, President Donald Trump's campaign um, to challenge the Electoral College results, um, making Joe Biden president-elect. And, you know, she if, if that's where you stand, Kelly Leffler, uh, that's your stance, all right? That you know, I don't mind it if you want to. If you want to put yourself out there and have yourself looking silly, um, really acting like uh, that, all of a sudden, the the, the uh, this presidential election campaign and these votes were manipulated. If you really want to put yourself out there to think that way, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. But the you know, are you doing this? Because we saw her out there, you know, pointing. You know, doing this, the people were cheering, and you, you know, you're galvanized. You're ga you're trying to galvanize the voters, um, the Trump supporters. You're trying to get those votes to to regain your your Senate seat uh, in Georgia. You know, I would, now obviously you you lost the vote um, to Raphael Warnock, uh, fifth by fifth. You know, from you know, he had 51 percent of the vote, you had 49. So obviously you lost that election. Um, but in this particular case. Um, you are wanting to contest or you, you are at least are you at least voicing your support for President Trump saying that you will challenge the electoral college revolts and you will object to those votes all right that's what you said you said you would object to it now the funny thing is is we all know what happened on January 6th we all know what happened on January 6th um, when Trump supporters uh, rioted and terrorized the Capitol building. They ran up in there, um, tearing stuff up. Um, they, they were a riotous mob. Um, people got killed. Um, people within the riot were killed. A, a police officer was killed. You know, after being hit in the head with a fire extinguisher. So, so we know that the rock, the, the the mob that went in there. You know, meant business. You know, pipe bombs were found outside of the Capitol. Uh, people had guns. People had weapons. Some of the women there had mace. They, you know, for all those who say that they came in there as some innocent mob, that's a lie. All right. You know, I, I don't profess to be Democrat or Republican, but I'm not going to sit here and lie and act like they just ran up in there just to take selfies. You don't run up in a building like that with weapons and, and, and being that type of disorderly if you don't have some type of ill intention. And so it was at that moment, you know, because I think for a, for, for a very short time, for about an hour to 30 minutes, it started to look like 1776, where if you were a politician back in the 1700s, if you couldn't play party favors back then, you couldn't say that you were gonna do something for the people and then just not let it show. Because people would really actually show up to your office with guns and pitchforks. And they would literally physically remove you from that office and replace you with somebody who would actually get the job done. And so when people ran up into the U.S. Capitol, they were there to make sure you were going to honor your word. They were there to make sure you said you were going to challenge the Electoral College revolts. Now we're knocking on your doorstep to make sure that you follow through with it. All right, because now if you backtrack and we standing right here in your door, now you have to deal with this big riotous mob. You don't have to deal with the media and the cameras and you can go hide in your mansion somewhere. That, that, that's the reality that they were facing. And so after being faced with a riotous mob of Trump supporters who were there to make sure 
that you weren't just trying to galvanize people for the votes. They were there to make sure that you said you, you, what you said is what you actually meant. And so once the pressure was applied by Trump supporters, I want you guys to watch how Kelly Loeffler now backtracks and does a complete backflip on everything that she said before. Now we just watched her pointing, doing all of this, waving to the crowd, galvanizing. You heard everybody cheering, all right? She's running for the Senate seat. She still has a chance to win at this time. We saw how she's galvanizing the people, all right? Plan the, plan the political game. You know, playing off people's emotions. All right. Now, let's watch how when shit gets real and when a police officer gets killed and when one of the rioters gets killed and when a few others also get killed due to people due, due to running up into the Capitol building to make sure that you honor your word and because they also are Trump supporters. Let's just watch how she reacts then. And it, it was at this moment after I played this video, you'll see it was at this moment. I knew that the WNBA and Atlanta Dream and all of those players were 100% correct in kicking her out of the WNBA, making sure she had nothing to do with that organization. Let's get to that video right now. When I arrived in Washington this morning, I fully intended to object to the certification of the electoral votes. However, the events that have transpired today have forced me to reconsider, and I cannot now in good conscience object to the certification of these electors. The violence, the lawlessness, and siege of the halls of Congress are abhorrent and stand as a direct attack on the very institution my, objected, my objection was intended to protect, the sanctity of the American democratic process. And there you guys saw it right there. Now, you guys can go check out that full video. You can hear her full statement online. You can find it everywhere. Uh, but Kelly, Kelly Leffler completely backflips after fully intending to object to Joe Biden's certification. She's completely backflipped because pressure was applied. See, she has, because shit got real. See, when, 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 when the situation became reality that her political beliefs needed to be upheld or something that something could literally physically happen to her she completely backtracks all right i mean just the just in the past just in the last video we saw her galvanizing the people pointing we're gonna do this this is president trump we're gonna support him we we just literally saw that all right and but when people come knocking on your doorstep saying oh um you got us on that objection right you got you got that you got that object hey kelly you make sure you make sure you you know how that you know how the bully just taps on you. Yeah, Kelly, we need you to we need you we need you to go ahead and object to that certification. All right, but when people really get up in your face, all right, and you don't have a wall of security protecting you, now all of a sudden you want to backtrack. And now these same Trump supporters that you were just galvanizing with your hands, pointing everywhere, galvanizing, cheering them on, hoping that they vote for you, now you're denigrating them. Now you're calling them violence. And then, and, 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 you know, these are the same people that you were just boosting up to support President Donald Trump in this very, very odd challenge to Joe Biden's uh, election. You, you were the one that galvanized them. You were the one that said you would stand by President Trump. And when shit got real, which it did, which for black people, you know, there were some black people that didn't really pay too much attention to some of the social issues or maybe not give enough time to it as they should have. And it took George Floyd, it took a video watching George Floyd get literally killed for eight minutes and nobody do nothing for it to actually galvanize people. See, it got real for a lot of black people when they saw that video. So a lot of black people said, you know, we gotta move different, we gotta act different, we gotta do things differently. And that included the play, the WNBA players and the WNBA. They said, you know what, no, nah, nah, we can't just talk no more. We can't act like we're about it. We actually have to start doing things. So I definitely appreciate um, the WNBA for standing on that because look how look how easily she was swayed off of her opinion. When, when, when the people that she galvanized came knocking on that Capitol door saying, 
Uh, make sure you make sure you take care of that objection. Make sure you make sure you object. All right. We just you know, we just here to make sure you do it. You do it. You fine. But if, if you don't follow through with it, you're going to have some problems. All right. So when they come knocking on their doorstep now, it's now now you can't play them games like the election was rigged or fake or anything like that. Now, now it's no, 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 no. We, no, that wasn't what it was. Now you just completely backtracking off everything you just said and did. So the, so the fact that you were so easily swayed off your vote or off what you said you were going to do the fact that you were so easily swayed makes me believe well why were you so against black lives matter all right what were you just doing it because you were towing party lines were you just doing it to galvanize a voting base were you just doing it to cater to certain people who you also knew didn't agree with the black lives matter movement like everything you've everything the, 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 because of how you so quickly backtracked i now have to go back and reanalyze everything that you did and on top of the fact that stories have now come out that said president trump reportedly told kelly leffler he'd do a number on her if she didn't back the electoral college challenge so there are reports out there there are very credible reports out there that are saying that president trump swayed you to side with him all right. When the people came knocking on your door at the Capitol, you fell back. You backtracked off of that because you, you know, out of fear. So now you backtrack from objecting to Joe Biden's certification. Now I have to really reanalyze everything that you've done politically or said politically up until that point, including what you did with the WNBA. All right. I don't think I don't think your stance on Black Lives Matter was ethical, moral or had any substance because you didn't follow it up with anything else that could potentially be done to address these social issues. Now, as I said before, I didn't agree with the slogans. I thought that the leagues like the WNBA and the NBA could have done more. I wanted to see more. See, she didn't she, she didn't give the and more. When she said when she when she went against Black Lives Matter and what the players and what the league was trying to do to address these social issues, she didn't come with a replacement um, a plan. She didn't come with a bigger and better plan. She didn't come with something that might be more effective. She just said, replace the Black Matter, Black Lives Matter with a flag, right? So essentially, what she was doing was she was just being condescending towards the Black Lives Matter movement. That mat that that mat that movement. What's going on socially here in the U.S. That doesn't matter. It's about America. And she and what she did was she wanted to violate the U.S. flag code by putting a flag on the jerseys um, as opposed to helping the players and the WNBA come up with something a little bit more tangible that they can do. All right. So now that I go back and reanalyze after seeing you backtrack, backtrack and backflip all over everything that you said you would do for President Trump. And when shit got real, and when the people came knocking on your door, you completely get scared and you backtrap. And now you're calling the people that you were just galvanizing and supporting. Now you're calling it a violent riotous mob, which they were. Um, Now I see that you are too easily swayed. Um, you're, you're just too easily swayed. You're either swayed by fear or you're swayed by self gain. All right. Your name was already, your name was already caught up in insider trading, all right. When 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 COVID when the when the COVID nineteen when the COVID nineteen pandemic hit, you, your name was brought up in insider trading, um, because you got insider tips on this and you sold stocks you sold certain stocks and shares to avoid losing money, so your name was caught up in that for self gain. All right, the the Black Lives Matter you were against it for self gain because you're trying to cater to a particular political base. All right. You had no real tangible solutions. You had no real care, ethics or morals with regards to the social issues that were going on in the U.S. So you're exposed for that. And now you're completely exposed for backtracking. After you said you would object to the electoral college vote, you now backtrack when the people came to your front door and shit got real and it was right there in your face, live and direct. All right. These are the types of politicians that are sitting running the United States. This is what we got to deal with. And so, you know what? I definitely got to give a big time apology to the WNBA and those players of the Atlanta Dream and just players all across the WNBA that were adamant about getting her up out of the WNBA fast, quick, in a hurry because they knew something that I didn't know at the time. 
that she's not genuine, she's not sincere, and she definitely should not be the senator of Georgia. So I, I'm glad that I'm glad that Ralph Warnock was able to win that Senate race. Hopefully you can get somebody a little bit more credible in there who could do a better job because as it stands right here, this, this she's only in it for self gain. All right. And, and, and if, as you guys can see, if it if it can affect her in a negative manner, whether physically, whether mentally, whether or financially, you see how she backtracks. But that's what we wanted to touch on today, man. I want you guys to let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments of this video. What do you think about this particular situation? About how the WNBA handle it? All right. Do you think those players? Uh, and the WNBA took more backlash than they should have for their actions against her. Were they right? I, I now, like, again, yeah, you know, if, if what's right is right, what's wrong is wrong. We have to come back here at FYF Sports. You know, if we did, if our value, if our initial valuation was not right, we just have to come back and rectify. But in this particular situation right here, uh, we had, we definitely had to come back and issue a big time apology to the WNBA and those players because they actually made the right move. This is not the type of person that you want head in your WNBA team, especially in a in a league with majority black players um, in, in front offices. You, this is not the type of person you have in her because she does not. The only thing that she can see right now is dollars and cents because she turned on her own political base. All right. She 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 says things simply to cater to party lines. It's just completely asinine. It, it's, it's outrageous. So um, and, and, and karma's and karma's something else because now she's also lost her Senate seat to Ralph Warner. But make sure you guys in the comments let me know what you think about this particular situation. Um, let me know your thoughts and comments on it. What do you think about today's social climate? All right, is it getting better? Is it getting worse? All right, what do you guys think about those riots on on January sixth? Um, um, were they right for taking action like that? Were they wrong? Um, just let me know again. I know I know this can be a bit contentious for some. Let's not let let the conversation get too far out of hand. All right. If, if, you, if you disagree with my particular take on this, let me know. Hey, it's called FYF debates. All right. It's not FYF agree. All right. You don't have to agree with my take on this. This is just my take based on our research. So, again, if you disagree, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the live chat. We can chop it up. We can talk about it. But as it stands right now. We've exposed Kelly Leffler as a complete fraud, and we're glad that the Atlanta Dream have removed her, uh, and the WNBA have removed her from all uh, operational practices in the WNBA. Hey, but it's FYF Sports, man. It's been another great podcast video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to the video if you haven't done so already. We're grinding to 20K. All right, we got a lot of new new information, a lot of a lot of sports news that's gonna be coming out soon. We got the college football playoffs uh, with Alabama coming up Monday. We got NFL playoffs. We got NBA news. Um, a lot of teams and a lot of players are being affected by the pandemic. All right, how is this gonna shake out for the WNBA? So make sure you're make sure you're tuned in with FYF Sports over the next week or so uh, because we're gonna be dropping a lot of information with regards to just podcasts or live streams to address some of these sports topics. Um, but hey, but it's FYF Sports, man. Again, like I said before, been another excellent podcast video. We'll be back for, with more sports and news. But until then, it's FYF Sports. <laughs>